Hey guys, my name is Shai and <laughs> I am here to say something. I'm just not entirely sure what yet. And um, in my hands, I just have uh, these two little pieces of green malachite. That's what this is called, right? I think it's green malachite. Um, okay, here's the, <laughs> here's the deal. Um, I'm pretty out of it because the last 24 hours has been really energetically intense, like in a good way, but I've kind of gotten a lot of different, different kinds of downloads and I don't know how they all fit together. So maybe I will just do this in a very like segmented way where I just <laughs> kind of put everything out there. I'm not even gonna, gonna even try to tie it together and it, it'll be what it's gonna be. So, Let's see, I started last night when I got really, really tired uh, randomly in the middle of the afternoon and I went and like lay, laid down for a nap. And that is always when essentially my guides or somebody is like calling me in for like a meeting, so to speak. It's like, <laughs> I always have, um, like I only nap for about 10 minutes and but while I'm kind of in the lucid dream state, I have these, um, you know, like communication experiences or like astral travel experiences. And um, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that I should try to not actually go to sleep when I do that. I should try to sit up and see if I can drop into like a deep trance meditation. So note to self for that one, that might also apply it to somebody watching this. Um, the first part of the communication was just showing how, um, There's a huge <laughs> spectrum of energy. Uh, specifically, we're, we're talking here. Here, I'm talking about the kind of light workers, star seeds, like the awakened collective, the like spiritual type of people. Um, you know, the kind of people who'll be watching this video, essentially. <laughs> um, how there's like a huge spectrum of bandwidth. How some people are really kind of um, having really tough emotional time. Um, like really down at the bottom of the, like the wheel, right? Like the 10, ten card in the uh, tarot in the major arcana, the wheel of fortune, right? Some people are at the bottom of the wheel having a really, really tough time. Other people are kind of in the middle, um, just kind of chilling, just kind of rolling with it. And some people are riding all the way to the top, like riding, riding really high on this energy. So wherever you're at in that, just know that it's, it's part of this entire spectrum happening and if you are you know like a starseed light worker and you feel like you're at the bottom <laughs> and you, maybe you're wondering like what's wrong with me am i failing in my spiritual purpose um why isn't all of my spiritual wisdom like helping me like why why do i keep having tower moments that kind of thing it's well, first of all, like there's nothing, you haven't done anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with you and you shouldn't feel worse on yourself just because you're at the bottom of this cycle because that's all it actually is. It's just a cycle and you happen to be at the bottom of it. Other people are at the bottom of the cycle at other times and we all just move through the cycles, right? And no matter where you are in this particular cycle, where you are in the, the kind of bandwidth, whenever we hit the bottom of the cycle, it's to soften the ego, to soften, soften, soften the ego, because during the dissension cycle, we have uh, built up our ego to protect us so that we could literally be incarnated because without our egos, we simply could not have incarnated during such dense, dark, challenging energies on, on a planet, right? So we created those egoic structures, this egoic shell in order to literally be here. Um, but of course, now we don't need those anymore and we need to let it go. So um, it's to like dismantle actually is the, the, the word is dismantling your ego. Like you've created all these egoic structures and we go through tower moments and the bottom of the cycle in order to dismantle the ego that you've built up. So that's why, you know, I'm not at the bottom right now. <laughs> I'm very happy to say, um, but I can remember being at the bottom. I can remember being at the bottom for so many years 
like for most of my life, it feels like sometimes, right? Um, and I really understand now how my ego was being dismantled, right? I had to face so many fears, so many of my worst fears and then survive them. And then once you survive your worst fears, doesn't matter what your fear is, once you survive your worst fear, that's when your ego has softened when, cause parts of it have been dismantled and when you can shine your light brighter. So literally the darkest moments of your life are so that you can shine your light brighter. And okay, so that's one message. I didn't know that that was going to be part of this. Um, the next thing I'm gonna jump to is I saw Archangel Gabriel and he presented to me as like an ancient Greek man, which I thought was very interesting. Typically, I don't see the archangels as in like physical human bodies, but it was clearly Gabriel and it was clearly like this like old Greek dude, <laughs> like with a beard and like curly hair and all of that. Um, <sighs> part of his message was about how everything we're doing right now is, is about... It's just about balance. I don't know how to put the rest of the message into words. Balance, balance, balance. Everything's being balanced out. I'm feeling um, like baggage literally being removed from my body. Stuff is being taken away. Stuff is being removed. Some things are being removed whatever's being removed from you, it's because it, the thing that was with you is throwing you out of balance, throwing you out of balance. It's a weight you no longer need to carry. And some things, however, not everything is gone forever. Some things have been removed for cleaning. <laughs> some things have been removed for cleaning to be purified and then brought back to you. And when they come back, they'll be lighter and brighter and also um, you can heal when the thing is removed from you. It can be taken from you, then you have a chance to heal in isolation or just without it intruding on you. And then when it comes back, it'll be a vibrational match for you. <sighs> I'm going to jump again to a kind of, it, it's all connected, but I, I can't really connect all the dots in my head at the moment. So the next thing has to do with the mercury um, retrograde in Aquarius. And this is really a timeless message. This is absolutely for whenever you're finding it. Um, but I am recording this the day on Jan January 13th, 2022. It's the day before Mercury goes retrograde in Aquarius. And, um, I was having trouble for a bit, like catching a vibe on what that was about, but now I'm understanding it. And if you're watching this in the future, it's just ignore the, the planets and whatever they're doing. This is, this is a thing, this is an energy that is out there and you can tune into it whenever. So don't worry about, about the astrology, right? But um, for those of you watching this when I post it, it, this is going to be a theme for the Mercury retrograde in Aquarius. And it's about how um, that Aquarian energy, I see Aquarian energy. Uh, be, so for people watching this in the future, this is also just to do with the entire, like moving into the age of Aquarius, if you, if you like that way of thinking about it, right? So I see Aquarius energy as um, like a snowflake, a snowflake. But it's not made of snow or like frozen water. It's, it's made of light. And every single soul is like a node. And then everybody is connected with these lines of light all connecting us in this massively complex cosmic sized snowflake of light, right? Um, but in the, you know, recent millennia on earth, we have been all schmucked together. It was like the snowflake was crumpled and got melted and like melted together. And we have had so much trouble differentiating ourselves from each other figuring out, is that my energy or is that your energy? So smucked together, so everything was so dense, we couldn't tell what is me, what is you. So much confusion on that, like so much confusion to the point where how, 
how, how do I, how do I even describe it? Um, people are hidden from themselves. People don't even see themselves. Um, so if you're watching this, you are absolutely one of the people who is more in tune with yourself than, I don't know, you know, your, your general like masses of people. I'm, I'll, tr I'll try not to label them, right? But you, you are better at seeing yourself. You have always had a stronger sense of self. Um, and yet there are still so many things that you think are you that are actually other people because you are so energetically sensitive that it's just all confused and all strung together. And the image I keep seeing is, um, it's like somebody thinks that they're like a bronze ball. Just imagine a bronze ball, <laughs> but the bronze ball isn't you, but you walk around every day and you show people that you're a bronze ball. <laughs> and that's what people see when they look at you and that's what you think you are. And you didn't even know that you're not a bronze ball. If you were to crack the ball and like let that bronze shell come away, you would find inside that you are like, green malachite, right? Or maybe you were rose quartz or any, like name any other type of crystal or flower or ball of light or literally anything. Um, an animal, like it's just anything. There's it just the thing you thought you were was just the outer shell and there is so much more, there's something else inside of you that you didn't even know was in there. You didn't even know it was in there. I know I've talked about this before about like getting in tune with deeper levels of your true self, of your inner self, of your most authentic self. But this is like a little bit of a different flavor because it really has to do with getting rid of the influences of get, getting, the, this is the main point of what I was trying to get at when I was talking about Mercury and retrograde and Aquarius and all of that. It's like, they were showing me all of these like beams of light connecting us, right? Like all these like threads of consciousness connecting us. And some of those threads are, you know, what you would call like etheric cords. When you think, when we think of bad etheric cords, like sludgy black ones, like where people are vampirizing on you and sucking your energy and stuff like that, right? Um, like those bad kind of cords, some of them are, some of them are like that. And those are being like right now, whenever you're watching this, being massively cleared out. There's been like a cleaning thing, theme happening um, so many people, I bet like every person you talk to about this would have like a slightly different perspective on this idea of like cleaning and clearing, like everything's getting cleansed out and these cords are being just like sometimes really abruptly removed, like really abruptly removed. And then suddenly you're like, wow, I didn't even like know I had <laughs> like a cord attached there. Um, so that is happening and that is good, but also <sighs> not all the cords are, you know, parasitic, right? They're, they're also just because we're all connected to each other. We're all interconnected. We are all this great big web. We're all this great big snowflake. So of course we're all interconnected and uh, not all of our connections and attachments are bad, but we're getting like spread apart, spread apart because we're rising up into lighter, more spacious energy and we're spreading, 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 spreading apart. Um, and that is very interesting because even though there's becoming more distance between people, and I really even, I mean specifically like humans, right? There's more energetic distance between us. Um, that's allowing two things. One, we can see other people more clearly. That allows us to see other people actually more clearly. It's like before someone, it's like you can't, you can't see what your friend looks like if your friend is like plastered to your face, right? <laughs> that's kind of what it used to be like. Um, and now they're like peeling off of you and pulling away and now they're gonna be like way over there, you know? Um, but now you can see them. Now you can see them. Now you can see what they're actually like. And some things, you might see things on them that might surprise you because now I'm seeing like turning the lights on after a house party, right? Turning the lights on after a house party. You had fun in the dark, right? Everybody had fun. You had, you had a grand old time. It was a great, really awesome house party. But then in the morning you turn the lights on and you see <laughs> everything that actually was going on in the dark, right? Some of it, maybe you're like, wow, I wish those people hadn't done that in my house. Or wow, I wish they hadn't done that while I was in the same room with them, even if it was dark. And also you just see like the aftermath of the party, like all the empty beer bottles on the floor and all like the pizza on the ceiling and stuff like that, right? So the lights are coming on and now we're seeing the aftermath. And um, the message with this is 
don't like regret the party. Don't regret the party. You're like, even though the party made a big mess and even though you're like, wow, was I really doing that in the dark? Or were those people really doing that in the dark? Now you can just, the, it's like, now you can see it, but that doesn't actually change that you had fun at the party, right? It's like, now the lights come on and you might think, ew, ew, did I really do that? <laughs> was that really what was going on? And it might give you this creepy feeling about stuff that happened in the past. Um, but the message is kind of like, don't, don't feel bad about it. Don't let like guilt and shame coming at you because just remember that you had fun at the party, right? Don't fixate on the, on the dirt. Just, just clean up the mess, right? Kick those drunk people like out of your house and clean the pizza off the ceiling and pick up the empty beer bottles. And it's all, it's all fine, right? That's just why there's this cleaning happening and why you're like sending people away, right? And get out of my house, <laughs> get out of my house. You know, we'll, we'll party next time, but maybe those two people won't be invited type of thing. Um, another thing, um, along with this energy, with this space creating, um, and people like spreading, spreading out, making space, making so much space, um, that reflect, there's, there's like a reflection going on where that is reflecting what is happening in your mind. You could think about which is happening first. Is your mind doing it first and then it's reflecting in the, in your environment or is it the environment doing it first and it's reflecting in your mind, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, the point is that it's happening on both levels and in your mind. Um, this is going to be like increasing your psychic perception because you're going to be seeing yourself more clearly and you're going to, which opens up your like intuitive channels, your psychic channels, all of that more clearly. So you can receive more, um, communication and downloads and all of that. <sighs> but there's also like, it's like an opening of possibilities. Suddenly everything is possible. Like everything is possible and not everyone's going to have this problem but many many people will i'm already noticing this problem where my mind my human mind which is trained to think negatively and which is trained to think that a catastrophe is coming right if you are prone to any type of anxiety then this message is for you okay your um all of this is going to add up to you predicting bad events more often and with almost more confidence right because you'll be like wow that was like a prophetic dream or like wow i received these messages and i got all these downloads and it's making me think that this bad thing is going to happen and this can run the whole gambit from you know you're worrying about you know, maybe you have to do your income tax and you're like, it's going to be like a $5,000 bill. How am I ever going to pay it? Like, blah, right? Or you could be thinking to some kind of like planetary event or some kind of, you know, worried about like your health. Like it could be literally anything. And you might find yourself, there's a potential here because this is just because there's like, you're tuning into infinity. You're in tuning into intelligent infinity and all things are possible. All things can manifest for you and but your human mind is can't be allowed to to drive to run the show here because your human mind for most people is trained to go to the negative so if you feel your mind going negative if, if you feel yourself slipping into fears you got to notice that and be like not uh, uh like not today not on my watch because um your your guides your higher self will never send you messages of doom and gloom right there's a difference between like getting like an actual real real warning which will like resonate through your entire body and will will be like i know that that isn't for me like i know it's not for me and that'll be the feeling not for me when you if you're being really warned off of something not for me not for me that's the feeling of a warning if, if suddenly you're thinking like if you find yourself thinking about other people or future problems those aren't really warnings that's your human mind <laughs> like getting confused about how to tune into intelligent infinity so <sighs> try to if you find yourself doing this try to just notice that your mind is skewing to the negative and that it is trying to convince you that negative things are coming to you and all of that and try to just drop out of it like Find something concrete and find something with your that you can concentrate on with your physical senses. Physical senses, like find a, find a stone and just like look at it, right? Pet your cat, eat a pizza, <laughs> you know, find something you can focus on with your physical, physical senses and just don't give any energy to those negative predictions, those negative fears, because that's just going to be 
part of this strange energy of everything opening up and but equally and try to imagine what if this is all working out for me what if this is all going to be perfect and beautiful and since intelligent infinity is opening up to me what is like just just like imagine everything working out for the best imagine like your biggest dreams imagine like you want to go explore the greek islands imagine you want to start your own business imagine you like i don't know why i'm thinking like roller coaster parks <laughs> Um, that, that, I don't know, that just like intruded in on me. I don't, I don't know why roller coasters, but you know, just, um, focus on imagining your best potential, right? Like, over, like literally practice overwriting the negative thoughts because it's like, as your ego is being dismantled, it like opens up and then these little things that have, that were contained by your ego, your ego was containing your fears, apparently. Um, and now those fears are being released because your ego is no longer holding on to them. And you're going to literally just notice them floating by. So your thoughts will just be noticing these things floating by. Just let them go. Let them go. Don't, don't like grab them. Don't grab them and pull them back and then like worry about them. Just let them float by. <sighs> okay, so that's that. Oh, and then the other thing, jumping again, is... <sighs> I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why. Um, but I was getting, so this like archangel connection coming in, but then also this massive ancestral connection coming in. So it's like, we're getting this like double, double whammy <laughs> of like from both directions. Um, the ancestral thing is, man, it's going to, it's going to vary so much depending on like who your ancestors are, um, what part of the world they were from, what their lives were like. Right. Um, but there's actually being space made also bet between you and your ancestors. Um, not that you're actually disconnecting from them in any way, but actually so that you can see how you are different from your ancestors and how they are separate from you. But at the same time, you're seeing how you it's so strange, isn't it? The more space that is made, the more you can see clearly. The more space that is made, the more everything <laughs> just is like, oh yeah, okay, so that's, my ancestor, that's me. Now that we're separated, I can see who is who, but then I also see how we're so interconnected. Strange, interesting, but also perfect. <laughs> um, something I was really aware of, I'll just have to talk about this from my own experience and you can relate to it however it works for you. Um, like I woke up just stressed, stressed about money, right? <laughs> for, for me, the thing it's like it's always money in my head it's like there's never enough money there's never enough money right there's never enough money <laughs> and today I was like who the fuck is sending me that thought like who is telling me that like I, I have enough money like it's good right like I am abundant always I'm always like rewriting rewriting that for myself <laughs> and, and then I realized um this it was something that one of my one of my my paternal grandmother said about <laughs> her her parents, so my great grandparents, you know, they, um, my dad's side of the family, they're all Finnish, um, and I, they were all farmers for like forever, right? And um, they came to Canada. They they were farmers in Saskatchewan. Um, first, you know, my gra my grandparents still grew up on the farms in Saskatchewan, but my grandma was telling me that when her parents finally left the farm when they were old, they could no longer look after the farm and all of their children like, like ran away and didn't stay. None of them wanted to, um, you know, be farmers anymore. Right. Um, my grand, my great grandparents apparently moved into town, which would have been a very small town in like rural Saskatchewan, but civilization to them. And even though this was the sixties, Okay, the 60s and even rural Canada had electricity and running water in the 60s. <laughs> um, but they bought a house at the end of the street with the money they got from their farm. And um, sorry, I was just interrupted by the man, the dog and the cat. So what was I trying to say? My great grandparents, right? They, they move into town and they don't have, even though it's the 60s, running water or electricity <laughs> like and my grandma was saying their, their rationale was like there's no money there's no money and um th this whole thing there's no money there's no money and you know how many times i've heard my ancestors say that even when even when they have 
plenty of money for to live a comfortable lifestyle. There's no money, there's no money, there's no money. So I, <laughs> I just, it really, really hit me today that it's like, there are certain thoughts that my ancestors had and they had these thoughts for generations. It's like, like almost like a thought parasite, like a thought virus, like in that, that was my cat. <laughs> um, like, like a thought wedged in there. It's almost like it was passed on through our DNA and definitely passed on through like family conditioning, right? <laughs> and today I, I, I had to, I was just like, ah, when I, when I realized that my ancestors are like literally inside of me and sometimes they are literally in control of my thoughts and literally in control of the, like the things that I do and the things that I feel and the things that I don't think I can do, right? Uh, <laughs> for me, my ancestors are almost entirely like limiting aspects just because all of my ancestors, all of them are farmers. All, all of them for like thousands of years, they've all been farmers. I'm the first person in my family not to grow up on a farm, um, like ever. Um, and it's not that farmers, <laughs> I obviously have great respect and a, a great love of like farming, right? But uh, farmers know that you have to work very hard. Um, and at the end of the year, your crop can still fail and you still might not get by and you might barely have enough potatoes to get through the winter, right? <laughs> there, there is like a, a scarcity mentality that through generations of subsistence farming, right? Um, like we've inherited all of that. If you have, some of you, there must be people watching this who have, you know, ancestrals, many, many ancestors who are farmers. And it's like, the, the limitations of that lifestyle are embedded inside of you. And now that there's, there's all this space, because the space, this space creating thing is not just happening um, between the people who are alive right now. It's also happening back into the past, stretching, stretching back out and creating space between all the people who ever came before you. And this is good. This space is good because it's like a decrumpling. It's like putting you back to the space where there should have been before, before everything was schmucked and melted and pressed together. And now it's like, oh, I have room to breathe, right? Oh, I have room to breathe. Now my dog is coming to visit. This is a very, uh, everybody's coming in to say hi. Oh, he's shaking. What's wrong, Waffles? Hey, what's wrong? He's shaking. He's not very happy. Hmm? Let me finish, okay? And then I'll, then I'll make sure you're good. I don't think he's sick. I think he's just, he's a chihuahua, so he gets nervous. <laughs> and then he shakes. He just, he wants to be right here. Okay. I love you, Waffles. Okay. Now my phone is ringing. <laughs> Okay guys, this was like entirely impromptu and I'm actually about to go out to dinner and I think, I think, I think that was everything. There's one last thing, all of these bizarre interruptions and um, the fact that that thing ringing on my phone right now is a spam call. Um, some of you might notice an increase in interference, an increase in interference that is, um, It's almost like now there's more space for interfering energies to kind of move around and to notice you, right? They can find you easier. But did, I, I could feel that like I freaked somebody out when I said that. Um, don't worry, don't worry. I, I don't, these aren't like um, nothing super scary or anything like that. Um, it's like irritating energy. It's kind of like flies, okay? I'm talking about like the energetic equivalent of flies, right? You don't worry about a fly. It's just annoying, it's kind of gross, but like, it's only going to live a couple days, even if you can't get rid of it, right? So that, that's what I mean. There's like energetic flies buzzing around. It's just an irritation. And the final kind of metaphor I want to leave you with is I really realized today it was really cold and I was out for a walk. And at first when I walked outside, it was so cold and I was like really cold, right? But then as I started, you know, <laughs> warming up, um, I re like I was like taking my coat off and stuff. And um, it struck me like that is a metaphor for vibration, right? Well, I mean, because literally when you start moving and you start warming up, your body is vibrating more. And 
then you don't feel the cold as much. And I really, it struck me about, you know, different people have different sensitivities to cold and even you and your own body, different days, you'll feel the cold more keenly. And it has to do with literally how much like the cells in your body, body are vibrating. Are you vibrating more and warming up and fending off the cold? And then you can go out running in the snow, like in a bathing suit, right? Um, or are you like really just like cringing in on yourself and like putting layers and putting layers and putting layers and not moving and trying to stay warm? Same thing with like, cosmic energies and vibration. The, the, the more you move, the more you act, the more you warm up, the more you like get moving and grooving. And it's not really so much about grounded action. It's about how you're letting your consciousness flow, letting your energy flow. It's like, are you letting yourself flow? Are you letting yourself flow? <laughs> the more you can vibrate higher, the more you can shine your light, the more you can like shake it and make it, the more you actually can't feel the lower vibrations, right? That's how you protect yourself from lower vibes, bad vibes, the vibes you don't want. You create your own vibration and it creates like a protective bubble all around you. Oh, and now I'm finally remembering, I didn't quite finish the thought about the copper ball and breaking it and inside you find that you are a, um, like rose quartz or something. <laughs> Some your fav Pick your favorite beautiful crystal. Um, how do I articulate this? I just have this sense that you might be surprised about the people around you. Like think of somebody you know or somebody you've met once who just seemed like so repressed, so claved in on yourself. And you kind of thought like, wow, like well, what's with this person? It's, it's like they're not really there. It's like they're not really here. I'm like, who are they? Do they even know who they are? Like, what do they want? What are they like? It's like the, there was no way to like interact with them. Um, and you kind of like couldn't even tell like who they are. <laughs> um, and they just seemed so shut down, so caged in, so repressed is basically the word, right? Um, it, it's like people like that, um, they've been so locked away, like so locked away. and so unable to express themselves, so unable to express themselves that they couldn't even express themselves to themselves. Like, how do I put this into words? I don't, I, I struggle with this because even though I'm constantly like peeling back the layers of the onion to find like my more authentic self and I'm constantly like liberating myself from self-repression, like, that's like, that's my whole thing all the time, my whole life, even before I knew I was on a spiritual journey, that's been like all I've ever really focused on in life. Um, but I think people who have lived fewer lives on earth, you know, maybe you won't, maybe someone's only lived five lives or 10 lives on earth or something, just, just to, just to like, I, I, I saw all of my lives flash before my eye once, and I know I've had at least a thousand lives on earth. So just to, just to provide the the kind of comparison to give some context here. Um, if we're looking at somebody who's only lived 10 lives on earth, maybe in those 10 lives, they just never had the opportunity to express themselves because they've only ever lived in such dense energy. So it's almost like the dense energy around them, they, they didn't have a chance to build up a sense of self or a, a way to protect themselves or they couldn't build up that vibrational bubble. So they were just like, so their, their self was so like cramped <laughs> that they couldn't, express it even to themselves so that they didn't even know who they were at all. But now all this space is happening. I just see this like new type of awakening happening where it is a spiritual awakening, but there, these people aren't necessarily going to be having like, you know, the kind of spiritual experiences that like I talk about on this channel, but it's going to be like a personal awakening, like a, an awakening of self an awakening of self going, people are going to go like, wow, I am me. <laughs> this is who I am. I am not them. I am me. This is what I like. This is what I want. And they're going to be able to first express it to themselves. And I think this is going to be a very strange experience for them. Like very strange. Cause then they're going to have to look back on how they used to be and go, was I even living? Right? This is like waking up to life, waking up to life and realizing that like, I'm alive. I am me. I am here. I need to live my life. So <laughs> I, 
This is strange because I don't really feel like this kind of awakening applies to many people watching this. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Maybe somebody's finding this and never, maybe if somebody, if you're, if you're watching this and you feel like that applies to you and you're going like, I, I can't believe I, I, like I never would have watched a video like this and I've listened to this crazy person talk all the way to the end of it. Um, but something is resonating here. So maybe there are some people watching it and this like awakening of self is happening to you. But I feel for a lot of you that, um, who like watch my channel regularly, um, that you might be, I think I'm supposed to tell you this because, or I think it's not that I'm supposed to tell you this. It's like, I think this idea is coming up in our consciousness because we're going to be seeing people around us having this awakening to self and awakening to life. And we're going to have opportunities to just kind of light their way, to just light their way a little bit. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing we need to do for them. They don't need us. They have their own guides. They're walking their own perfect path. Their soul is awakening, but we can light their way. I just be, be the lighthouse, be the light keeper. <laughs> okay, wow, this just like never ends, right? Um, it's less about being a light worker because that implies that you have to do something, right? More about being a light keeper. Be the light keeper, be the lighthouse keeper. Some of you are just going to be a light keeper holding it inside of yourself and shining the light for others. Others of you might build something, whether it's like something like a YouTube channel <laughs> or like your home. If you're a homemaker, right? Your, your, your lighthouse is your home and you build your fortress of light for others to come into. Especially if you're like the kind of parent who your kids always have their friends over, right? Because it's like your house, your home is a beacon of light. Your house is the lighthouse, right? Um, others of you, you create your lighthouse with your art. However you create the light, it, it lights the way for others. It's literally like just like putting little orbs, little glowing orbs out there and it lights the way for others as the people go through this awakening to self, this, this, this self-awakening. It's a little bit like going through puberty. You know when like someone's like 11 or 12 and suddenly it's like, wow, it's like they, they suddenly just became more alive and it's like they're more with it and you can like they're thinking and you can like communicate with them easier, right? It's almost like that, except this is going to be happening like to adults. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and it definitely has to do with the Aquarius Leo axis, which is going to have a lot of action basically from here on out, you know, in different ways, it's going to come and go. But if you happen to be watching this like several years after I post it and Pluto is in Aquarius, there you go, right? There you go. But Pluto and Aquarius, that is an entirely different video. So I'm finally going to go. I love you guys. Bye.